Uh, hello, what's up? So, uh, this is um, the last video in my series on uh, what happens after salvation. So this is, this is part six. Sort of the, the conclusion, uh, I have just two verses here, uh, two, two sets of verses. Uh, Romans chapter 12, verses 1 and 2, and then 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verses 11 through 15, which is one of my favorite passages in the Bible. I'd say both of these are actually really good passages, some of my favorites. A uh, very important set of verses I think all Christians should know. Um, that can give you maybe a good idea, like a conclusion of basically a summary of how to live the Christian life. I think these two passages sum it up. Uh, Romans 12, 1 and 2 tell you how to live. And then Romans, uh, I mean, and then 1 Corinthians 3, 11 to 15 will tell you what happens if you do actually serve God. And it talks about the rewards. Um, so it's, uh, I'd say, a very, very good summary. Um, so first we're going to read... Uh, Romans 12, 1 and 2. So Romans chapter 12, verses 1 and 2. Uh, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present pre that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Um, so I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God. Present your body's living sacrifice. So your body is a living sacrifice. Once you're saved, you're bought with Jesus' blood. You are a living sacrifice. So, you know, a sacrifice is like a one-time thing. That's it. You know, you sacrifice, you know, the Jews sacrificed, you know, lambs and sheep and goats and all that. And that was it. A one-time thing. But this is a living sacrifice. So you sacrifice while you live. You sacrifice your time, your energy unto God. Um, and it says, uh, wholly acceptable, which is your reasonable service. So it's reasonable because you were bought. You are now part, you know, you're going to say you're God's servant. And that kind of a mentality doesn't really, you know, the, the modern mindset doesn't work with that. Like being a servant to someone like what, um, you're independent, you know, you're, you have freedom and free will and all that. Yeah, that's true. But uh, what what the lost world doesn't realize is that you're you're, you're always going to be a servant. You're always going to be serving someone. I mean, if you want to get cynical, in the, in the you can say you're you're always going to be subservient to to your, your company, your boss, the government. You're always going to be subservient to something. Uh, I mean, that that that's the truth. Like you you really are in the physical realm, but that's just how it is. And uh, and, and then your flesh, what you think, well, at least I have freedom in my own free time. I have the freedom to do whatever I want. Yeah, that's true. But th the truth is you're either going to serve your flesh and sin or you're going to serve God. So you're, you're still a servant. You're, you're still manipulated. Your mind, still, you're, you're, your mind is going to be manipulated by the world and by Satan and by your own flesh. Your, your mind's always going to like it's, it's always um you're always going to be serving something. If you think you're, you're completely free from that, you're not going to be manipulated, you're, you're totally wrong. So um, so it, it is better just to serve God, and, and, and you'll be fine. If you serve God, then you're not going to have to worry about being manipulated like that. Because um, God God has your best interest in mind. So, uh, But it's, so it's a reasonable service. So it's reasonable for you to serve God because he bought you. Um, verse 2. Be not conformed to this world. Unfortunately, that is a huge problem these days. People are very conformed to this world. Christians are very, very conformed to this world. A lot of them do not realize how conformed to this world they are. Um, if you if you if you stay if you if you keep your head in the Bible and reading and praying and going to a church that does the same, then you will realize just how conformed most people are to this world. Um, People do not have freedom. People just follow the crowd. People follow the crowd. People just, yeah. Peer pressure. Peer pressure isn't just for kids in middle school. Uh, adults are much worse at handling peer pressure. Adults cannot handle peer pressure. The average adult cannot handle peer pressure. I, I think kids are better at handling peer pressure than adults, to, to, be, to, be, to be frankly honest with you. Um, people get so conformed and think about what other people think, and they just go along with the world and sin and the the... The hobbies and the interests and whatever is popular and yeah independent thought no nah. especially these days critical thinking independent thought that that's kind of dead and this isn't just me as a christian saying that there's plenty of famous people like 
psychologists and philosophers that are actually have their head on right. Even if they're not Christians, they actually kind of think along the correct lines. And they will point out these kinds of things that people do not think independently and of critical thinking these days, and they just follow the news. So uh, yeah, before I get too off topic on that, but um, so yeah, do not be conformed to this world. That is a daily struggle because it is very easy to be conformed to this world. You want to get away from that. But be transformed by the renewing of your mind. So if you keep your head on the Bible and you pray, God is going to constantly renew your mind. He's going to refresh your mind. And because um, like when you get when you go to sleep, your body gets rest. Your, your mind also rests when you sleep. You need that. And the body, the, the Bible that you read and the prayer that you do is going to cleanse your mind. It's going to cleanse you spiritually. So you're not getting influenced by that junk. Um but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. So very important. You stick to God. I mean, it, it sounds simple. In, in theory, it sounds simple. Read the Bible, pray. Uh, maybe tell someone about God, God, Jesus. Um, do something in church. Just, it sounds simple in theory, but it, it's very hard to do in practice because, you know, because of sin, because of the sin nature. But these two verses summarize how you should be away from the world and you're going to be separate. You're going to be peculiar. So some Christians are worried about that. They're like, well, if I do that, then, you know, I'm not going to be like, they, they don't say it. They don't say that. I don't want to be cool. Like I won't be cool. Like that's literally what it is. They, they want to be cool. The people, people want to be cool. So they, they don't want to be peculiar or strange to their friends. So they're not going to tell them about Jesus. Um, they're, they're, they're going to, they're going to, they're going to kind of blend in with the crowd. Right. But the Bible says you are going to be peculiar. The Bible literally says that. You will be a peculiar people. The, the Jews were a peculiar people. They were different. Christians are going to be a peculiar people. You are going to be different. Yeah, like, of course, that's what the Bible says. And then, like, everyone's, like, shocked. Like, they're surprised. Like, like I mean, yeah, like, because of your flesh. You know, it's, it's hard to live that out in person. But they're surprised. Like, like, like they didn't know that. Like, like, I'm not thinking like, dude, you're, you're a Christian. How did you not know that? It's literally in the Bible, all throughout the Bible, that you're going to be different. You're going to stick out. If you're doing what God told you to do, you're going to stick out at some point. I'm not saying like be abrasive or, or mean on purpose because some people go too far. You know, they're, they're being, they, they act like so spiritually and holy and righteous and all that, like, like self-righteous and it's bad and it's abrasive and they're being jerks. And yeah, that's not correct. But I'm saying like, if you're just being like a normal, regular Christian, you know what God called you to do. You're going to have some kind of, uh, um, you're going to have some kind of character and dependence to you. You might speak out your opinions. And that will annoy people sometimes because you're, you're, you're preaching, you know, what's right. And, yeah, the Bible literally says that. And people, Christians act surprised. Like, like they had no clue. Like, it's in the Bible. Like, do, do you not read it? Like, that's, yeah, all throughout it. The, the prophets, you know, it's the, the, one, of the, one of the themes the Bible, even God was sending his prophets and those prophets were always making the people mad. I, I mean, I'm reading out of Jeremiah right now. I, I've been, I've been doing Bible studies from Jeremiah for like, I don't know, the last year or two actually. And like all throughout Jeremiah, he's like, I'm preaching this. The people aren't listening. I'm preaching this. Uh, God told uh, Ezekiel that I'm going to give you a, a hard forehead. Uh, so uh, like God told, God literally told Ezekiel, I'm going to tell you to go preach and they're not going to listen to you. And, but I'm going to give you a very hard forehead of adamant and you are just going to butt heads with them, but you're going to be stronger than them, but they're not going to listen to you. So isn't that like depressing? Like he already tells you the result. He says, I want you to do this, this, and this, but I'm just letting you know ahead of time. It's just not going to work. Like, but I just want you to do it anyway, even though it's just not going to work at all. So it's like, you're just telling me to do something that's actually like pointless, like, you know, point, you know, so, and that, that's, that's what God told him to do. And, uh, he, he, people weren't listening back then. So if the Jews weren't listening back then, like what makes you think most people are going to listen now? Uh, what, what people are like, most people aren't going to want to do right. Uh, that, that's just how it's always been. And so you're always going to stick out. If you are trying to do right, trying to follow God, you are going to stick out. You're going to be peculiar. Like that's just normal. So just, just get used to it. Um, I mean, it's not going to happen overnight, but you know, at least start, start, if you're not, you know, try to make progress in that direction that you are going to be peculiar and, and stick out. Um, so, uh, anyway, Romans 6, 6 to 14. So yeah, I just think a lot of Christians just don't, don't seem to understand that. Um, so anyway, I think I went way off topic on a lot of stuff there. Um, but anyway, yeah, for now I'm going to read out of first Corinthians 3, 11 to 15. 
1 Corinthians 3, 11 and 15. So Romans 12, 1 and 2 is about how you should be living your Christian life, like a summary of it. 1 Corinthians 3, 11 and 15 is a summary of um, the rewards, how you're going to get rewarded in heaven. And it's one of my favorite passages. I've, I think I've used it in like one or two videos already. So I'm just going to reread the passage. Uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a very common passage I use. Uh, a lot of times when I went in the past uh, door knocking or visitation, um, I would frequently use this passage to tell people about how they can't lose their salvation, about the rewards in heaven. I would use this passage a lot in, in, in talking with people. 1 Corinthians 3, 11 and 15, it says, uh, yeah, 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 11, it says, For other foundation can no man lay that it, than that is laid, which is Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is foundation. If you do not lay your foundation on Jesus Christ, you're getting nowhere. Jesus Christ is the foundation. You go, you go away from that foundation. You don't build on that foundation. It's going to be a mess. The, like your, your house will, 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 will break. Your house will get destroyed because it is not built on the proper foundation. Your house needs to build the right foundation. That is Jesus Christ. That is foundation. Uh, anything else does not work. That is the foundation. Jesus, the Bible, all of that. Verse, verse 12. Now, if any man build upon this foundation gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, stubble, uh, verse 13, every man's work shall be made manifest for the day shall declare it because it shall be revealed by fire and the fire shall try every man's work of what sort it is. So the fire is, I mean, we'll get to this later, but the fire is not trying your soul. Your fire is, the fire is trying your works. This is the judgment seat of Christ. This is where Christians get judged for the life they've lived. This is not for non-Christians. This is specifically a judgment of Christians. Their soul is not getting burned. The works are getting burned. So is your are your works wood, hay, stubble? Because wood, hay, stubble burns. Wood, hay, and stubble burn. The gold, silver, precious stones, that doesn't burn. That, that can, That's going to survive the fire. The fire will try the works you have done. Good works will pass through the fire, and you'll get a reward. The bad works are going to burn. You're not going to lose anything, but the stuff you've built, I mean, I mean, like I said, your soul is not, was not was getting attacked. It's what you've been doing. You've wasted your life, basically. You're, you're wasted your life. Your your works of flesh get burned. You know, and a lot of stuff we do is just for flesh. Like it just burns. It's not. It's not. And it's not something that's gonna, we're going to get rewarded for in heaven. The stuff you do for God, that that is what you get rewarded for in heaven. So gold, silver, precious uh, precious stones, wood, hay, stubble. So you want the gold, the silver, and the precious stones. You do not want the wood, the hay, and the stubble. Verse 14, if any man's work abide which he had built thereupon, he shall receive a reward. Verse 15, if any man's work shall be burned, he shall suffer loss, but he himself shall be saved, yet so as by fire. So very important passage because the soul doesn't get burned. That's what. So, so I've been saying this in many videos, but you know, you are not going to lose your salvation if you trusted in Jesus Christ as your Savior. What's getting tried here at the judgment seat of Christ is your works. If your works get burnt, then you just you just don't have rewards in heaven. Like, I don't know how that system works. You know, I can't, I'm not a prophet. I don't know the future. So I can't tell you what that's going to work, work like. But um, you, you serve God, you get a reward in heaven. You don't serve God, you get less rewards or no rewards. There is a system like that in heaven. That's what the Bible says. Literally, there's verses on it. Um, so it's, there's no, it's not like some, I don't know. I don't, I don't know how the system works. It's not like complete equality, I guess, in heaven. I, I don't know. Uh, you know, I, not a prophet, can't predict the future, uh, but there is a system like that. And so God God does motivate you to serve him, and you, you should want to do it, but some don't, a lot don't. A lot just say, whatever, I'm done, I'm saved. So it's a bad attitude to have, I'm saved, I can't lose my salvation, I'm just going to quit, whatever. And we often take that position, unfortunately. But that's not how it should be. You know, you want to serve God. Um, if you go do your own thing, um, you know, you're going to get punished for that. You're going to get punished for that. You're, you're saved. You're going to get punished for that, though. So, um, so j j just keep that in mind. So I think these two passages are some of my favorites, the Romans 12 and the 1 Corinthians 3, 11 and 15. I think they're great passages. I think it's a great way to do a conclusion for this set of videos. Um, but yeah, so it's reasonable for you to serve God, and you will get a reward. So it's not like... Um, yeah, God will reward you. He's a better boss. I mean, if you want to use that analogy, 
than any boss you're going to have here. He's a better father than any father you're going to have. So just keep that in mind. Uh, I'm going to end this series here. Um, I think I'm going to start, I'm going to go back to maybe doing shorts for a while and we'll see how that turns out. Hopefully channel keeps growing. The Lord blesses it. But yeah, hopefully things go great. So um, I'll see you next time.